All right, so we are now into our fifth and final video, our fifth and sixth guards, Ali Korn with the right foot, Ali Korn with the left foot. Like the Dagger, they do very, very similar things. Uh, left foot forward tends to always move to their inside because it's a very simple thing to do. So it's not dissimilar from Kurwan Alta, whereas uh, Ali Korn with the right is similar enough to Kurwan Strat because we're in the same position left shoulders meeting, swords in the outside of my body, etc. and so on. So we'll see a lot of similarities, but because of where I'm starting, there are also a few differences uh, with what I follow up with. So when I'm dealing with a mandrito high, we're still going to do pass across, but here we can actually thrust over top, or we can hit high, or we can hit low. So in all cases, I'm going to end up in Chin Yale because the Imbrocata tends to end an Iron Gate type guard. So whether that's through the thrust completing or it's me cutting high or low, that brings me to this position. And like all the guards, this one wants to go back to itself. So when we get out of here, so we've thrust it, we want to come back up to the unicorn with the right foot. Our second action is just a mezzo temple action, so we're just going to hit the hand. The mandrito, mezzo mandrito. Let's just get it out of the way, hit that hand. So not even defending, but this is in the way in case it comes through the slow down a bit. Third, we have the testa. So we have, we're already here, we're just going to bring this from behind, trade, and hit with whatever is, makes sense. One three to high, third cloak is low, one three low, third cloak is high, whatever makes sense in that moment. One three to low, we're just going to pull that leg out of the way, and thrust or mandrito to the arm. So one or two. We have so we have two options. We can transition down to entrare and thrust. We can also use the cloak, and this is where we see our biggest difference in that because of where I'm starting, I can't really thrust over top, I can't do the verso to the leg. So what I'm going to do is throw a mandrito to their leg. So I'll show them a different angle. So we are here, we are stepping strongly across as we hit their thigh with a mandrito but it's low, very, very low. Now we can also deal with the reversal to the leg. And because I'm high, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna bother doing a redopio because it's that's a very long path to travel. So I'm just going to or we are just going to pull the lead, lead, lead leg back, but maintain measure. So I don't want to step back. I want to stay in this position so I can step forward again with the right foot if I need to. In Brocata, we have two options. We can use a mezzo mandrito, which we're seeing a lot of over and over again, or we can do the outside slip if I've allowed that possibility. So either this is open, but we beat thrust, or I create this opening, I beat and cut to the face. And then, again, the opening is here, sorry. Opening is here, so they come to more towards my right. We will do the outside slip by stepping to their right, right leg follows. So, when my left side is available, my inside is available, that's when we do 
in Mezzo Mandrito. When my right side is open, I'm giving that. That's when we do the outside slip. Finally, for this guard, we have one defense against this focata, which is simply the inside slip. Uh, we could do the face guard, we could do the Mezzo Mandrito. Um, this is just very expedient. So the attack comes in, I guide her out of the way, and we thrust to the face, or we can put Mandrito to the leg. From here, and step around. Now, left foot forward, we have very similar actions. The uh, main difference is being that the right leg is what's going to pass. So we can stay Mandrito high. We want to do the same thing as before, where we are taking a small step here with the left foot. And now we can either thrust to the face or cut to the leg. Notice that I'm doing the same thing we did for Cody Moment up though. Is that we're making the initial step to the right, and the attack is happening to their left, to their inside. And then we will end up back to their inside. So very, very similar to Kodomo Gata, also similar to Ching Yale. So time, we're here, defend, hit, or hit, and then get out. Mandrito to the leg. We want to essentially avoid it, which is what we do with the sword dagger as well. Just want to get out of the way and hit them for the thrust, or we are going to get out of the way and hit the arm for the reverso. When a reverso comes, we're still going to step across the right foot, and we're still going to do mandrito. We could also, in this particular case, do a imbrocato on the top. So we are here, we step across, we could keep this on top, or we step across and we throw the mandrito a little to the leg. Again, because we're instructing their view, but only if their cloak is high. If it's low, I don't want to waste my time being slowed down by the the excess cloth. We got us so low, as per usual, we just want to avoid the lead leg and let them hit themselves. When we are doing the imbrocata, if I have this nice space open, I've allowed them to attack, we can either do the overhand reverso hitting the right side of the neck. Or in this particular case, unlike unicorn with the right foot, we can thrust over top with an imbrocata. We can also from here use the mezzo mandrito and cut to the face, or slice the face rather, or we can use that punta reversa as my second, as my other option, which is a little bit quicker. Finally, if we're dealing with this Tocata, and this is exactly the same thing we see in Sword Dagger, we're just going to use the inside slip, so guide her out of the way, and thrust, or maybe the cloak is in the way, guide her out of the way, cut high, or cut low. So that covers it for all six guards, the four low, two Corimocas, two Portifanos, and the two high, both Alicorno. So you see a lot of repetition here. The only thing that's really new is the, the sweep of Corimocas Threat, where we bring this up and stab at the same time, and some of the targeting and kind of where we are hitting because of the length of the cloak. We want to make sure that we are never interfered with ourselves. We'd say this about the, the dagger as well, but because it's fairly long and narrow, it's a bit easier to avoid, but this is quite a bit longer, especially if you have a much longer cloak. I tend to wrap mine twice, so I have a nice and robust 
but I still have quite a bit of cloth hanging down, so it's really important that when I'm doing my, de I'm doing my defenses and I'm hitting, defending high, hitting low, that I'm not kind of halfway, which is really gonna mess me up. I don't wanna make my job harder by being in the wrong position. So that concludes all of the defenses from using the sword cloak from all six guards. In the next videos, we'll be looking at the provocations again in sequence from Kodalunga all the way to Ali Kodalunga with our left foot forward.